What is up, Country Chord? I am Brennan Kelly, and today I am joined by the man himself, Charles Wesley Godwin, before his show at Talia Hall here in Chicago. Charles, how are you doing today, man? Good, good. This is a first show on a on another run, so excited to get back out there. Awesome, good to hear. So I think one of the main questions on a lot of people's minds is just how are you dealing with obviously signing your record deal with Big Labs? I'd like you know stuff before it, stuff after. So I guess just walk me through that process of going through everything. I mean, everything's the same. It's just mm -hmm. going to have a, a lot more expertise and a, a bigger team and more resources to try to grow the music, but mm -hmm. nothing creatively is any different. Gotcha. I made a, made the whole album and handed it to them, and they loved it. And mm -hmm. it's just uh, it's just another another step in the road on on my creative journey and writing. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm really proud of it, and hope folks enjoy it. Yeah. You know, you can't help it, but help but hope that uh, you know people like like the work yeah um speaking of the album i know you tease it on twitter that is coming this year do you got any release date that you can give us or anything like that or no i not not for certain yet gotcha. that i can give you but it, it's gonna be it's gonna be soon and awesome. it definitely won't be at the very end of the year or anything like that sounds so. good so this year still is oh yeah gotcha. yeah 100 awesome. percent. sounds good i guess um one thing that i think another a lot of people would like to know is like you and zach bryan obviously you guys are known as like you know you tour with them you have jamie together how did that relationship start Yes, yeah, it started from Zach reaching out on uh, on social media. Okay. Just messaged me one day and asked if I wanted to do the Belting Bronco mm -hmm. when he was still living up in Port Townsend, Washington mm -hmm. State. And you know, I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to be. I'll be in Seattle next month." You know, mm -hmm. this is August of 2021. Mm -hmm. He's like, "All right, sounds great." And we made plans to mm -hmm. to do that video and meet up that day. And you know, long story short. The whole thing in the military ended up happening where he got, you know, released by the Joint Chief to, to go mm -hmm. play music. Yeah. Which I think only him and Elvis are the two people in the history of the Navy that that's happened for. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that happened right around that time. So then he was moving back to Oklahoma and it fell through. But then when he went on tour that fall, I asked if I'd come out and open a show. And first one we opened was Raleigh, North Carolina mm -hmm. in uh, October. And you know, we did a good job and yeah. he just added us on the rest of the tour. And that ever since then, just me and him get along great. Our guys get along great. So it's just, it's an enjoyable time on the road together. Awesome. So like, obviously, Jamie's a huge song for you. How did that process work? Did he hit you up? And like, how was that just recording? Like, how did that whole process go? Yeah, it was uh, January 2022. Zach FaceTimed me one day and, and had like the first verse mm -hmm. done with the chords and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, what do you think? And I was like, man, that sounds like it could be a great song like do you want to write it with me and mm -hmm. i said sure so over the next handful of months we were kind of working on stuff shooting it back and forth and then in june i think he reached out to me he's like hey man you know what i'm just going to take it from here he had an idea that, mm -hmm. that he wanted to to see through to the end and by the end of that month he had the whole song done and asked me to come up to philly one day and and record it so i just rolled in and hadn't heard the whole thing finished yet yeah. And within 30 minutes of parking my car outside of the studio, we had it done. Oh, wow. I went up there. Elijah wrote the lyrics down on a piece of paper, and I think I had it on a music stand in front of me mm -hmm. and was reading it for the first time with the mics hot. <laughs> and, you know, that's, awesome. it was uh, it was pretty organic, uh, fast thing that happened. But it was, it was fun to do it that way. Yeah. So I guess take me through your writing process, because obviously I think you're a stellar songwriter. You have a lot of great tracks, like, story-wise. So, like, how do you, like, what's your process, do you have, if you have any? I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty consistent. Okay. So I I write just about every day mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm active. Sometimes after I finish an album, I take a little bit of time and rest and yeah. just don't even think about songs for a month or so. But mm -hmm. but when I'm active, I'm writing every day and uh, just chipping away at it little by little. And then every now and then the muse, you know, shows itself. And I'm able to write something real fast, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's just weeks and months of just tinkering and yeah. and working on something. Awesome. So, like, obviously, you have a lot of I'd say darker songs. You have Cranes and Potter, Gas Well. How do you have to flip the switch to write like some more darker, like murder ballads, like that, or is it just kind of like natural? I think there's a there's a darkness in me mm -hmm. that you know I'm I'm pretty nice. To yeah. folk. I try to be as nice as I can to people, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a side of me that there's a part of me in every song. So yeah, um, yeah, that's just uh, expressing a, a side of me mm -hmm. that maybe not everybody gets to see. Yeah, and um, take me through 
transit powder because obviously I heard I saw an interview you did and you had it's like kind of based in reality a bit so like how did that song come to yeah you? it was it was kind of like sparked by reality mm-hmm. there's a, a shell cracker plant along the Ohio River in Beaver County Pennsylvania mm-hmm. it's in Potter Township and I was driving by years ago when it was under construction mm-hmm. and it had a skyline of cranes unlike anything I'd seen it looked like they were building Manhattan at the same time mm-hmm. and it was this unique point in time where it just looked so so striking. I got to the studio and asked the guys what they were building. They told me about the you know the plant, it's a natural gas facility, and they said you know there's an interesting story in the paper where a body was found when they were breaking ground for part of this this place, and they called the police out and the police processed the scene, and everybody was kind of under the assumption that it might be like a cold case or something mm-hmm. like that. So they're treating it like a like a crime scene mm-hmm. and they uh, sent the body back you know, it was just bones yeah. to whoever dates them and kind of yeah. tries to get information DNA stuff out and they found out it was somebody who lived over 150 years ago and mm-hmm. I uh, I think that's all I knew at that point and just kind of took it from there and, and made up the story about who that might be and how they got there and came up with what became like Claire's story. Yeah, because like when I listened to that for the first time, like I had visible chills on my arms, like wow. So what would you say is your favorite song that you've written, if you have one? I know they're all like kind of like your babies, so if you could choose maybe one or two. Man, I'd say uh, a new one, one that'll be on the new album. I'd say Another Leaf. Okay. And All Again. Mm-hmm. Nice. And West of Lonesome. Those, those are my top three right now. Awesome. But, you know, it's hard to pick. Mm-hmm. So obviously, in over yonder, you say I'm Allegheny High. Your band's Allegheny High. Where did that come from? Because I've been curious about that for a while. So my family farm that that's gone, it's been in the family for generations, mm-hmm. is on the Allegheny Mountain in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I meant by that. Oh, okay. And that's that's where the Continental Divide is. Water on one side of it flows into the Ohio and the Mississippi and water on the other side of it flows into Chesapeake. But I use it as a metaphor from crossing this life to the, to whatever's next. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of like where that came from. And then the guys, a lot of my guys are from Allegheny County, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. So they, that was just a good fitting name for, awesome. for like them. Um, and so another question I have is like, Obviously, you have a lot of inspiration throughout country music. If you could pick four to put on like a Mount Rushmore of country music, who would you put? Mount Rushmore of country music yep. would be Hank Williams. Um, Willie Nelson. I think you'd, you'd have to put Garth Brooks. Okay. Just because of just the, the effect he had and then... Uh, it's tough. It really should be like a dozen yeah, folks. It's kind of hard to pick, but uh, I'll go go with George Jones. Got it. I think he's legendary. The voice and and everything. I think it's no, nah, no, nah, Johnny Cash. Gotcha. Yeah, Johnny Cash. All right. So yeah, Willie, Johnny, Garth Brooks. And Hank Williams. Gotcha. That's but a hard. Question. That's a that's a really tough fun. question yeah. because I'm leaving a lot of people out. Mm-hmm. I thought it'd be fun. But oh yeah. That's so good. who were like those? Obviously, were your inspirations. Anyone else just growing up or even now? Oh, my inspirations. Yeah, it's like songwriting, yeah. Whatever. Big inspirations for me are the Aver Brothers, mm-hmm. Chris Knight, Bruce Springsteen, um, Chris Christopherson with the way he tells stories, mm-hmm. and I like his. I like that his song will just. And he's not scared to write five and a half minutes of a, mm-hmm. of a cool story. Yeah. I enjoy that. So, yeah, there's a few. What's your favorite Springsteen track? No, favorite Springsteen know. track would be State Trooper. Sounds good. That's what you wrote, the 1038. That's yeah. the first sequel. Is that going to be on the next album? Yeah. Or? Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like anyone else to, like anyone to know that's watching or listening? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No, I mean... To know about me? Yeah, yeah, anything. Fun fact, just anything. I mean, anything. fun fact, my best drinking game is Stump. You ever played that? No, no. What is, yeah, what Stump, is Stump's real good where everybody has a nail. Mm-hmm. There's a stump of wood. You tap the nail in just a little so it stands up, and then you got to 
flip the hammer and try to hit other people's nail. Okay. And when it's flush with the wood, you're out. Oh, gotcha. And when your nail gets hit, you take a drink, and then once you're out, you got to chug a whole drink. But anyways, I, I can't remember ever losing that stump. Nice. So there's a fun fact. I'm, I'm good at that and really bad at cornhole and mediocre at beer pong. Okay, nice. Um, I guess another question would be, like, any, like, independent artist that was in your position, like, just starting out, what advice would you give to them, if any? Besides not quitting, mm -hmm. that's half the battle, yep. is just to, to keep going. It, I'd say write every day. Don't wait to be inspired. Mm -hmm. Treat it like a job. Gotcha. Treat it like a job, and you'll get better. Certainly, mm -hmm. you'll get better. And to find your own voice. So everybody has influences and people that, that, they, that you take from as you're starting out and, and as you're trying to figure things out. But you've got to find your own unique voice, the way that you sound naturally when you sing. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard to work out your influences. Yeah. So that's that's a big thing because being unique is really what's most important. Mm -hmm. You can sing all the right notes, but if you sound like somebody that's already done it, everybody's going to prefer the person that 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 was the true original of that style. Mm -hmm. So if you're just imitating the way somebody else does something, you're always going to be you know second fiddle to who you're imitating. So. Yeah. You, if if you want to carve your own way, you got to find find your own voice and just be yourself. Gotcha. Well, I think that wraps it up. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Yeah, today. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Mm, thank you for watching, everyone. That was Charles Wesley Godwin. Good luck tonight, Charles. Thank thanks, you. bud.